One of the reasons why Cronenberg's Shivers is such a fascinating movie to study is because in terms of the horror genre, it shifts the emphasis. It really changes what we tend to consider the monster in a horror movie in a radical and very interesting new way. Now, as I was saying in my last video in my Cronenberg series, the production history of Shivers is very fascinating in the context of Canadian cinema, especially because it made $5 million at the box office, which in 1975 was a lot, particularly for a film that cost only $180,000 to make. So although it wasn't the highest grossing film the Canadian film market had ever seen, it was certainly the highest profit ratio to date, and we shouldn't forget that the Canadian government had been one of the film's major investors, and thus the Baron of Blood was born, along with a lot of the controversy that he would generate for many, many years. Now, Shivers takes place in the Starliner Towers apartment complex, which is deliberately set up as a literal paradise for young professionals. And this complex has got everything, and in fact it needs everything because it's located on an island. So already we have this very uh, mythological, well perhaps not mythological, but, but symbolic setting. An island of course will um, evoke uh, feelings of entrapment, uh, but also exclusivity and... Um, you know, islands too, they kind of maybe in a weird way uh, evoke the Garden of Eden, which is to say a sacred space that uh, people um, are able to access pure total pleasure and sustenance and so forth. But we know in our minds that uh, in the Garden of Eden, some sort of temptation is coming, and then that's going to lead to the downfall of man. So this is what's going on on this uh, complex. There's a restaurant, a pharmacy, all kinds of amenities, including doctors and dentists. And the whole point of this complex is that it provides an escape from the anxiety-inducing environment of the metropolis. So it's literally a kind of paradise. Uh, it's just the kind of paradise that's accessible from downtown Montreal, um, which is, you know, very attractive to be that close to civilization but have a exclusive uh, hideaway. And we learn all about this, uh, about the Starliner Towers um, apartment complex from a narrated slideshow that opens the film. And this slideshow is, in effect, an advertisement to attract new tenants. And those who have seen Cronenberg Stereo and Crimes of the Future will hear and see an echo from the pseudo-documentary and narrated style of those two earlier films, which were very art house and experimental in nature. Uh, Shivers, of course, is uh, a complete feature film. Now, the point of this opening sequence is to establish a status quo, as I've been saying, of luxury, quiet, health, and cleanliness, and cleanliness is especially important in the horror movie in general, but definitely uh, takes on larger proportions in a Cronenberg film. Now, Cronenberg very, very quickly disrupts the status quo he set up by immediately revealing that all is not well in the Starliner Towers. And we see this as a newlywed couple enters the building. The film cuts to a scene in which a strange old man is forcing his way into the apartment of a young woman. And from there, we are introduced to a whole set of ever-escalating troubles. Now, on the surface, these troubles that I'm referring to are these tiny little parasites that have invaded the bodies of the tenants and are causing the tenants to engage in certain disruptive behaviors. And these behaviors provide a great deal of entertainment throughout the movie. But at a symbolic and figurative and metaphorical level, these parasites are not the monster at all. It's really the building that's the monster. And the reason why that we can think of the building as the monster is that it's this giant pressure cooker in which the ingredients are human lives. And they're, you know, the thing that's causing the pressure is not just the building, but it's the social conventions that they live under. So compressed inside of this building are things like conventions of marriage, conventions of the identities that our jobs place on us, and there are some very distinct job uh, roles that are identified in the film, doctor, um, business professional, nurse, and so on. Um, and these kinds of designations create pressure on the people that hold those positions. And so in this, we also have uh, especially with things like doctors and nurses, we have an understanding of ourselves as biological beings. And this is why having a medical clinic in the building is so important. It's not 
just that by living in Starliner Towers, you were somehow guaranteed health, but rather you really guaranteed the ability to understand yourself as a sick individual when the need arises. So it's kind of really getting at it from the opposite end. And by being in this apartment building, you can get that uh, understanding of yourself as sick much more quickly than someone living in traditional housing in a city and so forth where you have to actually go, uh, you know, on a bus, in a car, streetcar, whatever it is, subway to get to the doctor and get your diagnosis. Here, your diagnosis is just uh, an elevator trip away. So this is why, in many ways, one of the film's earlier titles for this film is actually more interesting than the title Shivers. And that title was They Came From Within or another one was the parasite murders. But I like the idea of they came from within as being much more appropriate to the ideas in the film because it's this compressed life within the Starliner Towers and all these pressure cooking elements of social designations uh, that pressure like coal producing uh, diamonds. This is what's producing the parasites within people. And in terms of the horror genre, you know, it's not really the case that blood and guts and gore make shivers a horror film although they certainly do one of the key horrors here is the indeterminacy no one really knows where these little parasites have come from but uh what we do have that's so common in horror films is that we have people who think they hold an explanation for where these mm -hmm. parasites are coming from and so we get interesting speeches from doctors who give us certain scientific explanations and the counterpart to a scientific explanation is a religious explanation and if you look at a horror film like George Romero's Dawn of the Dead, you'll see that the film starts with all kinds of scientific theories, and then it moves into some religious explanations. But in Shivers, on the other hand, we don't get a religious explanation as such. Rather, we get an explanation that comes from the dream of a nurse. And in fact, it's not really an explanation, but rather a solution. And essentially what the nurse says is something similar to what the philosopher Slavoj Žižek has said, namely, learn to love your symptoms. Learn to love the symptoms of your disease. And what is so interesting about positioning Shivers as a horror film is that, okay, the building is a monster, the disease is coming from within our bodies, but the actual symptoms of the disease, crazily enough, are not really that terrible, or at least they're not so terrible. You know, it's true in the movie that some people die, but for the most part, what the parasites cause is sexual inhibition. And they use the humans as agents to spread themselves around. And, you know, by making them sexually uninhibited, that increases the chance that they'll be able to spread. The symptom of the disease is, in this case, in, in, in uninhibited uh, sexual behavior. And what this really does is it creates a kind of equality amongst the victims of the disease. So for instance, we at some point see, you know, there's this rather plump old woman who uh, she seems to be doing laundry for a living and she's rather unattractive. Um, but once she has the disease, not only does she become totally sexually uninhibited, but she also becomes uninhibitedly acceptable mm -hmm. by all the others who suffer, quote unquote, suffer from this disease. So in this scene where the nurse is giving what would in a traditional horror movie be the religious explanation for the indeterminate uh, plague that's haunting everyone and, and causing the downfall of civilization. What she says in her dream is that she encountered a diseased old man who stunk very badly, but who tells her that all flesh is erotic flesh. And she says that disease is the love of two alien creatures for each other. And so in her dream, she then makes love with this stinking, decaying old man. And what's kind of being said here is that, sure, our society, with all its conventions, creates nasty and negative side effects within us. And we are, in fact, as a society, so far gone that there's really no going back. And that what we should do is, instead of rejecting the difference we find in our world, instead of, you know, pushing the old, dirty man away, what we, we should what we should really do is not reject the symptoms of the disease of culture which is repression and so forth and to fear other people who are different and label them as fearful and different what we should in fact do is embrace the difference because when we deny difference which is essentially what is going on in starliner towers the whole thing is 
a building designed to remove people from the city, remove people from the dirt and the decay of the outside world by giving them complete access to the illusion of bodily health through access to doctors and so on. By placing ourselves in this position, we're really missing the opportunity to surrender ourselves to change. And change is something that's going to happen anyway, without our approval, without our acceptance, without our participation. It's just going to happen. And so what we're doing when we resist change, instead of going with it, we're, we're essentially destroying our bodies by essentially building you know, mental statues within ourselves that try and preserve a certain status quo or keep things the way they are. And you know, our bodies are actually being destroyed by this uh, mental behavior. So we're not really realizing that our bodies are behaving in ways that go against the content of our minds and the desires of our minds and our souls or whatever is driving us to have um, certain needs that we are trying not to fulfill because of anxieties about cleanliness and, and so forth. So at the end of the day, I really want to pose that uh, the concept that Shivers is only a horror movie in a very superficial way at the most uh, the most uh, basic level of reality. It's dealing in horror conventions, but it's really a philosophical film, and it's taking a rather honest look, not just at how society imprisons us, but how society uses our own bodies in the surface of producing ideas and behaviors that run against our inborn desires. So, if anything, Shivers, by featuring this disease that makes everybody equally inebriate, un sexually uninhibited, it inebriates them, like uh, alcohol or a drug, by doing this, it's causing a kind of liberation, allowing for people to overcome their fears of difference and see each other as the same, as equal portals to pleasure. And so this is why the film ends with the tenants of the building diving into the swimming pool of the apartment building, which, again, is this deeply symbolic uh, image, uh, which is an, it, it, the, it, the return to water is, a, is an image that returns very, very specifically in Cronenberg's Videodrome, uh, which was made many years later. Um, so diving into this pool represents a return to the primordial and biological state from which we emerged. Uh, sorry, from which we emerged. So instead of being kicked out of Eden, as it were, they're going into a deeper level of Eden. And after they do this, they then leave the Starliner Towers, not having been kicked out, but sort of by drunken choice, um, to go out into the city all together as a as a collective and to infect the world with what seems to be a horrible disease that we're all scared about, but it's actually with the goal of liberating humanity and showing how we are all equal in the flesh. So it's not invasion of the body snatchers where, oh no, my identity is lost um, and we won't uh, be able to recognize ourselves for who we are or anything like that. The purpose here or the idea here is that it is only by revoking our identities that we can have some sort of liberation and some sort of uh, totalizing, liberating, real, authentic pleasure by, el by eliminating that fear of difference and accepting it and embracing it. And that, I think, is what Shivers is really about and why it's such a great movie to study and think about further. Mm -hmm.